Hello sports fans, welcome to 3Sport Central. Today, we're going to go over my week 11 NFL prediction. So last week I had a record of 9-5, and five, and that brings my record on the season to 97-55. and 55. Kicking things off this week on Thursday Night Football, we have the Commanders at the Eagles. So this is a big game for both teams, as it's actually for first place in the NFC East. The Eagles, they're sitting atop the division at 7-2, the Commanders right behind them at 7-3. But I think this is going to be a good game. Both these teams are good offensively and have great run game. As the Commanders are the 5th best scoring offense in the NFL with 29 points a game. And they're also the 5th best rushing offense, rushing for 153 yards per game. Then offensively for the Eagles, they're 7th in scoring offense with 25.9 points per game. And they're the 2nd best rushing offense with 176 rushing yards per game. Now defensively is where there's a difference for these teams. As the Commanders defense is solid allowing 21.7 points a game, but they struggle to stop the run, allowing 142 rushing yards per game, which is 5th worst, while the Eagles are allowing just 17.9 points per game, and are only allowing 100 rushing yards per game, which ranks 6th best in the NFL. But to me, this game comes down to who can run the football better, and I think that's going to be the Eagles. They have the better run game, they have the better run defense, I think Saquon Barkley has a big game against the defense that struggles to stop the run. The Eagles are home as well, and I've got them winning an important NFC East matchup by a score of 26-21, but I could see this game going either way. Moving on, we have the Packers at the Bears. So the Bears are an absolute disaster right now. They haven't scored an offensive touchdown in their last two games, and they've lost three straight. The Bears also just fired offensive coordinator Shane Waldron, but that could be a good trade. But the Bears, they don't have to face the Packers, and the Packers, they've owned the Bears, winning the last 10 meetings, and since 2010, the Bears are just 4-23 against the Packers. But the Bears, they're really struggling, especially offensively. As they're scoring 19.4 points a game on the season, but in their last three games, they're averaging just 9 points per game. Then off the Packers defense, allowing 21.6 points per game. Then on the flip side, the Bears defense is pretty good, allowing 18.6 points per game, which ranks 7th. But the Packers offense is good, scoring 26 points a game. And I'm going to take the Packers to win this game fairly easily, as the Packers have just owned the Bears, and the Bears just look terrible. In their last two games, the Packers, they win pretty easily by a score of 28-12. to 12. Up next, we have the Jaguars at the Lions. So the Lions did not play that well last week, but they were able to beat the Texans, despite Jared Goff's five interceptions. But the Lions now face another AFC South team as they face the Jaguars. The Jaguars put up a fight against the Vikings last week, but they still lost, and they're one of the worst teams in the NFL. The Lions are scoring 31.6 points per game. And as long as they don't throw five interceptions again, I think they're going to have a huge game against a bad Jaguars defense. As the Jaguars defense is not good, they're the sixth worst scoring defense in the NFL, along over 26 points per game, plus they have one of the worst pass defenses in the NFL. Now, the Jaguars defense was pretty good last week, not allowing a touchdown, and they forced three turnovers, but the Lions, they're just a different animal offensively, plus they're likely going to be getting left tackle Taylor Decker back from injury. Now, on the flip side, the Jaguars' offense isn't great. They'll be starting Mac Jones again, as Trevor Lawrence is dealing with a shoulder injury, which could cost him the rest of the season. But the Jaguars' offense just will not be able to keep up with the Lions. The Lions win this game big, 35-13. Up next, we have the Vikings at the Titans. So the Vikings, they're not playing that well. They've lost two of their last four, and their two wins haven't been that great. Last week, they barely beat the Jaguars and didn't score a single touchdown. But the Vikings have a good opportunity to get back on track, as they now face the Titans, who are one of the worst teams in the NFL. But the Vikings offense is scoring 24.6 points per game, but a big reason they haven't had as much success as of late is Sam Darnold, as he's thrown five interceptions in the last two games combined. The good news is the Titans defense isn't good, allowing 26.7 points per game, and the Titans defense has gotten just the fourth fewest interceptions so far this season. Now, offensively for the Titans, they're not very good. They're scoring 17.4 points a game, and they face a good Vikings defense, which is the third best scoring defense in the NFL, allowing 17.4 points a game. But the Vikings, they should win this game easily. I think their offense gets back on track, has a big game. And the Vikings get a much needed convincing win, and they beat the, uh, the Titans by a score of uh, 27-13. Up next, we have the Raiders at the Dolphins. So the Dolphins are coming up a win over the Rams, which snapped their losing streak. And the Dolphins' offense has been playing well since Tua returned from injury. As since Tua returned, the Dolphins are averaging 25.7 points per game, 
And I'm expecting the Dolphins to continue to play well offensively as they face a, a bad Raiders defense along 27.9 points per game, which is third worst in the NFL. Now, offensively for the Raiders, they're not great, scoring 18.7 points per game, and Gardner Minshew will begin to start for them at quarterback. Then he'll face the Dolphins defense that did not allow a touchdown last week and is allowing 22.4 points per game on the season. But the Dolphins, they should win this game fairly easily. They're the better team here. I think their offense continues to play well against a bad defense. And the Dolphins win back-to-back -back games and win by a score of 26-17. Up next, we have the Patriots hosting the Rams. The Patriots upset the Bears last week. And then faced a Rams team that had their three-game winning streak snapped as they lost to the Dolphins in a game where they didn't score a touchdown. But the Rams offense is scoring 20.6 points per game. But they face the Patriots defense that's pretty solid along 22 points a game. Then on the flip side, the Patriots offense is pretty bad, scoring 16 points a game, but they face a Rams defense that's not great, along 24 points a game. But the Patriots, they've won two of their last three games, and I really can see them winning this game. They're home, their defense is pretty solid, and they do have a chance to win this game. But I'm going to take the Rams to get the win. I think they're the better team here, and as long as they can score a touchdown this week and not settle for five field goals, I think they'll end up getting the win. But I've got the Rams winning this game by a score of 20 to 13, but I wouldn't be shocked to see the Patriots get the win. Up next, we have the Browns at the Saints. So this is an interesting game. Neither team is that good, as the Browns are 2-7 and seven, and the Saints are 3-7. and seven. The Saints did pick up a win last week as they beat the Falcons in their first game under interim head coach Darren Rizzi. But with how bad both teams are, it makes this game very tough to predict. The Saints are scoring 22.7 points a game and they face the Browns' defense along 23.7 points a game. And on the flip side, the Browns are scoring 16.4 points a game, and they match up against the Saints' defense along 24.6 points a game. But I really have no idea who's going to win this game. The Saints' defense isn't great against the pass, so I can see James Winston having a big day for the Browns. But the Saints, they're home. They beat a pretty good Falcons team last week. I'll take them to get the win, and I've got them winning 20-17, but I really have no idea who's going to win. Both teams are so bad. Up next, we have the Ravens at the Steelers. So this is a huge matchup as it's for first place in the AFC North between the 7-2 Steelers and the 7-3 Ravens. Another interesting thing about this game is actually the first divisional game of the season for the Steelers, and we're in week 11. So that means six of their next eight games, including this one, will be played against divisional opponents. But I think this is going to be a great game, and in this game, we have a really interesting matchup. As we have the best scoring offense in the NFL, as the Ravens are scoring 31.8 points per game, and they face a Steelers defense that is the second best scoring defense in the NFL, allowing 16.2 points per game. The Ravens also have the league's best rushing offense, rushing for 182 yards per game, but the Steelers have a top five run defense, allowing just 87 rushing yards a game. Then on the other side, the Steelers are scoring 23.9 points a game, but in the three games Russell Wilson has started, they're actually scoring over 30 points a game. And Russell Wilson, he's been playing very well for the Steelers, as he's averaging 245 passing yards per game, has six touchdowns and just one interception. But Russell Wilson and the Steelers offense face a Ravens defense that isn't great, allowing over 25 points a game, and nearly 300 passing yards per game. But this is a game that can definitely see going either way. The Ravens, they have the better offense, but they face a really tough defense, while I think the Steelers offense will find some success against a bad Ravens defense. But I'm going to take the Steelers to get the win here for three reasons. One, they're home. Two, they have the better defense. And three, Lamar Jackson, while he's having a great season, he has not found success against the Steelers in his career. As in four starts, he has a 1-3 record and has thrown four touchdowns to seven interceptions. But I have the Steelers winning a big game and beating the Ravens by a score of 24-21. But this is a game that can definitely go either way. Up next, we have the Colts at the Jets. So the Colts are turning back to Anthony Richardson at starting quarterback. And the whole Colts quarterback situation is just a mess. Because they originally benched Anthony Richardson, but it wasn't because he took himself out of the game when he was tired. So they hoped Joe Flack would be good, but he threw two touchdowns and four interceptions over the last two weeks. And now they're going back to Anthony Richardson. But the Colts offense faces a good Jets defense that's allowing 21.4 points a game. Although the Jets defense was just demolished by the Cardinals, allowing 34 points. Now offensively for the Jets, they're scoring just 17.7 points a game and they face the Colts' defense, allowing 22.3 points a game. But this is a game that I could definitely see going either way. I don't trust the Colts because I don't know what to expect from Anthony Richardson. Plus, he's playing a good defense. 
But I also don't trust the Jets' offense because they've just been so bad this season. But I think the Jets' defense will win this game for them. I think they'll make things tough on Anthony Richardson. And I've got the Jets winning this one 22-17, but I really think this game could go either way. Moving on, we have the Falcons at the Broncos. So this is another interesting game. The Falcons, they've been playing well lately, but just lost to the Saints. And the Broncos almost beat the Chiefs, but lost in a blocked field goal. The Falcons' offense is good at scoring 23.8 points per game, but they don't face a Broncos defense that is the fourth best scoring defense in the NFL, along with 17.7 points per game. Then offensively for the Broncos, they've been decent at scoring 19.7 points a game, and they face an okay Falcons defense, along with 23.6 points per game. But this is a game that is very tough to predict, because it is strength for strength with the Broncos defense and Falcons offense. But this is another game that can definitely go either way. The Falcons are the slightly better team, but I'm going to take the Broncos to get the win. I trust their defense to hold the Falcons' offense in check. Bo Nix has been very underrated so far this year. I think he'll play well, and the Broncos' offense will do enough to get the win. The Broncos are also home, and I'll take them by a score of 21-15. Up next, we have the Seahawks at the 49ers. So the 49ers won last week as they beat the Buccaneers, but they now face a struggling Seahawks team. As the Seahawks, they've lost five of their last six games. The 49ers got Christian McCaffrey back from injury, and in his first game of the season last week, he had 19 touches for 107 scrimmage yards. And I think Christian McCaffrey will continue to improve just as he gets more playing time this season. And I think that could start this week, as McCaffrey faces a Seahawks run defense that is not good, allowing 4.8 yards of carry and 139 rushing yards per game. Now, the Seahawks defense as a whole hasn't been playing that well, allowing 24.6 points per game. And then we need to try to stop a 49ers offense that is scoring about 26 points per game. On the flip side, the Seahawks offense is scoring 23.3 points a game. And they have a great pass game, but they face a Niners defense along 22.4 points a game. And pretty good against the pass along under 200 passing yards per game. But the Seahawks, they've been struggling here. I don't see them going on the road and beating the 49ers. And I've got the 49ers getting the win by a score of 31-20. Up next, we have the Chiefs at the Bills. So this should be a great game, as whenever these teams face off, it is always an instant classic. But both these teams are really good, as they're the two best teams in the AFC, with the Chiefs sitting at 9-0 and the Bills sitting at 8-2. And to put that into perspective for a second, the Chiefs and Bills have the best combined record heading into a Week 11 game since the Chiefs and Rams played in 2018, and that was one of the greatest regular season games of all time, ending 54-51. I don't think we'll quite see a shootout like that, but I do think this will be a great game. The Bills' offense is scoring 29 points per game, which ranks third in the NFL, but they face a Chiefs' defense, which ranks fifth in the NFL, along with just 17.9 points per game. Then, on the flip side, the Chiefs' offense is also good at scoring 24.3 points per game, but the Bills are also good defensively, along with 19.3 points per game. But, this is a game that could truly go either way. Despite both teams allowing under 20 points per game, I think we'll see a higher scoring game, as we tend to see when these teams play. But, I think this is a game that can definitely go either way. It is a true coin flip matchup, but I think this is going to be a great game. The Bills, they've been able to beat the Chiefs in the regular season, winning the last three regular season matchups. Plus, they're home here, and I trust their offense a little bit more, as they've been the more consistent offense so far this season. So I am going to take the Bills to hand the Chiefs their first loss of the season. As the, I mean, the Chiefs, they have to lose at some point. They've come really close in last week. The Bills are probably the best team they've played so far. And I've got the Chiefs losing their first game of the season, and the Bills beat the Chiefs 27-24. Up next, we have the Bengals at the Chargers on Sunday Night Football. So we'll have a live watch for this game starting at about 8.15 Eastern Time on Sunday, so I hope to see you guys there. But this is an interesting game, as the Bengals, they're 4-6, and six, and almost entering must-win territory in terms of the playoff race. And they play a very solid Chargers team, sitting at 6-3. and three. But in this game, we have a really interesting matchup. As the Bengals' offense is great, they're scoring 27 points per game, they scored 30 points in back-to-back -back games, and they have one of the best passing offenses in the NFL, throwing for 254 passing yards per game. But the Bengals now have to face an elite Chargers defense that is the best scoring defense in the NFL, along 13.1 points a game, plus the Chargers' pass defense is pretty good, along 191 passing yards per game, which ranks 9th. On the flip side, the Chargers' offense isn't anything too impressive, as they're scoring 20.7 points a game. And that's good for the Bengals, because their defense is terrible. As they're the 7th worst scoring defense in the league, allowing 26.2 points a game. 
and the Bengals' defense has cost them a ton of games so far this year. As the Bengals, they've scored over 30 points in five games, and because of how bad their defense is, they've lost three of them. But I don't think the Chargers have the offense to win this game in a shootout, but I also don't know how much success the Bengals will have against the elite Chargers defense. So this is a really interesting matchup. I think this game can definitely go either way, but while I don't think it will be easy for the Bengals, I think their offense will be able to get enough success despite playing against a good uh, good Chargers defense, and I've got the Bengals beating the Chargers in a close one, 24-23. Up next, we have the Texans at the Cowboys. So we will have a live watch for this game starting at about 8.15 Eastern Time on Monday, so again, I hope to see you guys there. But the Cowboys, they look terrible. Their 3-6 and six have lost four straight games and were just demolished by the Eagles last week. The Cowboys will be starting Cooper Rush at quarterback, and he was awful last week, as he threw for 45 yards on 23 pass attempts. But Cooper Rush now has to face a Texans defense that picked off Jared Goff five times last week and is allowing 22.6 points a game on the season. Then offensively for the Texans, they haven't been the greatest as of late. They're scoring 22.4 points a game on the season, but I think they have a good opportunity to get back on track this week, as Cowboys defense is terrible, allowing 28.8 points a game, which is second worst in the NFL. But the Texans, they should dominate this game. The Cowboys stand no chance, and the Texans win easily 31-10. But those are my week 11 NFL predictions. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like this video, subscribe, turn notifications so you don't miss any other upcoming videos I do invest with as often as possible. Be sure to check out the community tab of my channel where you guys can vote on who you think will win some of this week's big games. But thank you for watching. Be sure to like this video, subscribe, turn notifications. I do invest with as often as possible. And I will see you in the next video.